2G is about sample spaces and events. And basically there are two types of things that you might have to do here. One would be if you're given a scenario, just one described in words, to be able to write out a sample space or an event or both as sets. And the other thing is that sometimes the sample space can get really big. So maybe it would just be a situation where you're asked how big is the sample space? Because it would be one where if you tried to write out the whole thing, it would take forever. Those are basically the two types of things that show up in this section. So the sample space idea has come up before, but we never really had to go around constructing them, so to speak. And that's essentially what we're gonna have to do now. So a sample space is really just the set of all possible outcomes. So like if you were gonna flip a coin, your sample space has two elements in it. If you're gonna write it like a set, it would be heads and tails, right? If you're just flipping a single coin. If you're rolling a single die, your sample space has six elements in it, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Those are your possible outcomes. And they do get more complicated than that, than that but that's the basic idea. Um, and then an event, um, so like any event that could happen um, as a result of the experiment is going to be a subset of the sample space. Um, usually a proper subset, because if you had an event that was equal to the sample space, um, that ends up not really being all that exciting. So usually it won't be the whole thing. I think in every example we're gonna have and in everything in the homework, it won't be. So just to have an example in here, suppose a person's going to choose two numbers between one and five inclusively, they have to choose an even number followed by an odd number. So that's the experiment. And so what are the possible results? Well, if one through five inclusively, if they just have to pick integers, um, I guess I should have said two integers, that would, that would have been better, that's what I meant there. Um, then they've got to start either with two or four because they've got to go with the even number first. Um, and then there are three odd numbers, one, three, and five. So if they pick the two first, then they could pick two, then one, two, then three, or two, then five. The other option for the first number would be if they picked four, right? That's even, it's between one and five. So they could have four, then one, four, then three, or four, then five. So these six, I guess, two number strings would be the six possible outcomes of that experiment. And then um, just to have a couple of events, just to kind of show how this works, where if event A is choosing four first, then four, one, four, three, and four, five are gonna be the possible outcomes that would satisfy that, right? Those are gonna be part of that event. And then if event B is choosing numbers where the sum is seven, there are a couple of different ways that you could do it. If you pick two first and five second, those are gonna add up to seven. And if you pick four first and three second, those are gonna add up to seven. But those are the only ways you could do it, right? If you go back to the sample space, adds up to three, adds up to five, adds up to five, adds up to nine, right? Those other four options aren't gonna work. So this is essentially the kind of thing that you end up doing. Um, and it can look different, it doesn't have to be numbers. And I guess that's what I was trying to illustrate here. And I wanted something with a bunch of repetition. And even though this was two words, I figured this would work out pretty well. So we want to get the sample space of choosing a letter from the phrase Northwest Territories, which if you've never seen it, that has the best license plate of basically anywhere. Um, so the, the Canadian Territory, the Northwest Territories, if you've never seen that, it's worth looking up. Their license plate is, it's a marvelous looking thing. So, all right, if we're going to write this out, um, you don't have to worry about duplicates. So like these extra T's we're not gonna include and these extra R's. So I would just go left to right through this thing. And it's just the different letters that show up. So my sample space, which is usually written with an S, like a capital S for sample space. So let's see, the N, O, R, T, and H, right? We haven't had any duplicates yet. Um, and then W, E, and S, still no duplicates. That T would be a duplicate though. We already have that in here. So let's see what we got. We already got all this done. And then those T's, we already got T covered and we, we don't have to write the duplicates in here. Already got E covered, already got R covered, don't have I, so I guess we can put that in here. And then already got a T, already got an O, already got all these as well. So that's it. 
So the thing that I was trying to illustrate with this particular example is that when you have repeated letters, you don't have to include them. You just have to make sure all of the letters get in there into the sample space. Um, all right, so then the next one, we have a sample space and an event, um, which I guess you could make one out of this. Like if you said, if you want to pick a letter from Northwest Territories, but it's got to be a vowel, right? Then your event um, would be O, E, and I, right? You can do things like that. But with two, we've got a specific one here that we're supposed to put together. So let's say if a person's going to choose a number in a set consisting of the first eight prime numbers, so that's going to be our sample space, right? So this right here, set consisting of the first eight prime numbers, that's going to be our sample space. And then we want to figure out the set representing the event E of choosing a number where the sum of its digits is two. This is a lot easier if you get the sample space first, even though that feels like extra work. Um, because then once you have the sample space, um, basically you're kind of organizing everything. And then for the event you go, oh, that one works, that one works, and you know maybe that one works and we're done. So it feels like it's extra work, but it's actually deceptively less work, I think. I think more writing, but less work. That's fair. All right, so our sample space, it's the first eight prime numbers. So two is prime, and then everything else should be odd. So three, five, seven, those are all gonna work. Nine is not prime, so I'm not gonna pick that one. 11, 13, that works. 15 does not, because three times five is 15. Um, 17 works and then 19 works. So those are the first eight prime numbers. And then our event E is that the sum of the digits would have to be two. Well, I guess just two by itself would work, right? Because I mean, if you're adding up one digit, it's just that digit. But then 11 is also going to work, right? Because one plus one is two. And that's it, right? These are all going to be too big, right? Four, eight, ten. So there's our event, right? which is a subset of the sample space up here, like it's supposed to be. All right, so things like that show up in the homework for this section. Um, let's see, this was the one that I thought was um, a little bit different. Um, it wasn't this exact thing, but it was something pretty similar that was in the homework um, where you're given a set of integers and then um, really the outcomes are the possible sums of any pair of integers. And so your sample space really consists of that. So we've got two different integers from the set here of these four are to be chosen and the result of the experiment is the sum of whatever two numbers get picked. And we wanna find the set representing the event that the sum is positive. So what I think I would do here, and this is really like the last one, where I think it's a good idea just to write out the whole sample space first and then go, oh, that one's positive, that one's positive, and that one's positive, we need those. So that's what I'm gonna do. But in order to get the sample space, I need the possible sums. So I'm gonna do that first. So the possible sums. So we're picking two numbers out of four. So the number of possible ways that you can do that is six. It's four choose two, right? It's a combination. If you do the combination of four with two, it's six. But the systematic way of doing it is I'm just going to start on the left and kind of work my way toward the right. And I'm going to say you could have negative eight plus negative two. You could have negative eight plus three. You could have negative eight plus nine. And then the other options that exhausts every, everything you can pick with a negative eight in it, right? Because the order of the two numbers that you pick doesn't matter, right? Negative eight plus three and three plus negative eight are both gonna be the same thing. Um, or addition commutes, right, to use the algebra term. Um, but then after that, you can have pairs that don't involve negative eight. So you could have negative two plus three, you could have negative two plus nine, and then the only other option would be, well, you just use the last two which would be three plus nine. And that's six, right? Three plus two plus one. So yeah, six combinations. But if you add these together, let's see, this is gonna be negative 10. This one's negative five. This one's one. This one is also, and these are kind of close together. So I'll draw in a vertical line there. That's one, 
then this one is 7, and then this one is 12. Okay, so if our sample space is the possible sums, then what we're going to get for our sample space, so S will be the set consisting of, now I'm just going to go through all the sums. So negative 10, we got that. We got negative 5. We got 1. We got another 1, so we're not going to include the duplicate. We got 7, and we got 12. All right, so then our event, um, so I guess I'll give it a name just so I can write this in set notation and have it look a slightly less awkward. I'll just say if A is the event that the sum is positive, then A is going to be the set consisting of, and if we go look here, these first two are negative, we don't want them, but these last three are positive, so it's 1, 7, and 12. And that's our event A. Okay, let's see. Next, um, now we're getting into the ones that are big, where it's just how big is your sample space. So a convenience store chain plans to expand into five counties in Arizona. And Arizona has 15 counties. So what's the size of the sample space? So this is a situation where order doesn't make a difference. We're just picking five, right? Just pick five out of the 15. So the thing that we're looking for is the number of ways to choose five counties out of 15. So five counties out of 15, and that's gonna be a combination. Right, order doesn't make a difference, so it's a combination rather than a permutation, right? So I guess I can put that in parentheses here, that order does not matter. Okay, so then it's just pick five, right? That's all we're doing, just pick five, don't worry about the order. So then the thing that we need is the combination of 15 with five, right? Since we're picking five out of 15. So that'll be 15 factorial over five factorial times 10 factorial. And just like when we had these before, when you do the simplification, I would get rid of the big factorial on the bottom, which would be the 10. So I'm gonna rewrite the 15 factorial by pulling a few numbers off the front so I get a 10 factorial in it. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 factorial. No point in writing that out all the way because I'm just gonna cancel it with the 10 factorial on the bottom almost immediately. But I'll write the five factorial out. And then I'm just gonna put the 10 factorial down there because we're gonna cancel those right off that. And then whatever else we can do just to see what would help, 5 times 3 is 15, so, all right, a lot of cancellation there. Um, 4, you'd have to cancel with the 12, right? That's the only thing that's divisible by 4 that's left. Um, and then, I guess, 2 goes into 14 7 times, so we're going to end up with 7 times 13 times 3 times 11 over 1, um, which is 3,003. So that's how big the sample space is, right? And if you try to enumerate them, like it would take so long, right? I mean, like that's a big number. Um, but yeah, it's just you're picking five out of 15, order doesn't make a difference, so it's gonna be a combination, right? Like if you're gonna use, I don't know, Cochise, Greenlee, Gila, La Paz, and Santa Cruz counties, then you're, it's just that you picked those five. If you didn't, like the different orders don't make a difference, it's, you're just picking five. So combination here. And the other ones that are like this on the next page, those are also gonna be combinations. So uh, I try to do something a little bit different with the ones on this page where they, they kind of um, bounce off of each other a little. Um, but the first one, if a college is choosing two weeks during the year to hold blood drives, what's the size of the sample space? Well, there are 52 weeks in a year and we gotta pick two of them, right? So what we've got here is that there are 52 
weeks in a year. And what we're going to do is choose two. So what that means is that we want to use the combination of 52 with two. All right. Well, since we're choosing such a small number, the combination is actually going to simplify pretty fast because then this will be 52 factorial over 2 factorial times 50 factorial. And if you get rid of that big 50 factorial, this will be real quick because you'll have 52 times 51 times 50 factorial over 2 times 1 times 50 factorial. Get those 50 factorials out of there and you're going to have 52 times 51 over 2 times 1 and 2 goes into 52 26 times so this will be 26 times 51 which is 1326 okay and there we go so there's um, the size of the sample space, another one you probably don't want to write out. That's a pretty big number, right? That's a lot of things. So just figuring out how big it is, that's enough. Or how many outcomes it's got, right? Because um, this basically is a cardinality question, ultimately, right? This kind of all ties back to set theory when we were doing that in unit one. Um, then number six, um, if, suppose event A occurs when neither blood drive happens during the summer. And so we say, okay, well, we know when the summer is generally, but if we're going to put like a defined limit on this is when the summer begins and this is when the summer ends, that would kind of help. So let's just say the summer is 13 weeks long. So if there are 13 weeks that are during the summer, 39 weeks are not during the summer. So that, I guess, would be the first step. That then if there are 52 weeks total during the year, then 52 minus 13, which would be... 39 weeks are not in the summer or during the summer, however you want to phrase that. So what we want to do is we want to choose two weeks out of those 39. So choose two weeks out of those 39. Okay, so then that's a combination. I mean, it's going to be the combination 39 choose 2, right? So just we're eliminating those 13 summer weeks and saying, okay, now we're just starting with these other 39, but we still got to pick two out of those. So 39 choose 2, I guess the simplification will be about as hard as it was in number 5, right? It's another choose 2. So you get a ton of cancellation because, again, you get rid of that giant other factorial which here will be a 37 and then you can rewrite the top as 39 times 38 times 37 factorial and then the bottom 2 times 1 for the 2 factorial times 37 factorial get those 37 factorials out of there and we're gonna have 39 times 38 over 2 times 1 but 2 goes into 38 19 times, so we're going to have 39 times 19, which is 741. And that's the answer. Which is smaller than number 5, which makes sense, right? We're using less weeks, we're not using the whole year, so there should be less options than there are in number 5. Okay. There are going to be even less options in number seven. So now suppose event B happens when one blood drive is in the fall semester and the other one's in the spring semester. So if each semester is 16 weeks long, what's the size of the set representing event B? Okay, so what we're doing here is we've got to choose one week from the fall semester. So choose one week. from the fall semester, which we said was 16 weeks long. And then the other thing that we've got to do is we've got to choose one 
week from the spring semester, which is also 16 weeks long. So what you would end up with, um, so I guess the size of the set representing B, basically you have to kind of partition this and say, we gotta do this in the fall, we gotta do this in the spring, right? So it's like those are two separate pieces. So we've gotta pick one out of 16 for the fall, pick one out of 16 for the spring. You can write this as a combination, well, you can write this out of combinations because you're gonna have two of them if you want to. You can write this as the combination of 16 with one times another combination of 16 with one. Although you don't really need to use the combinations here because then you say, well, if we're just picking one, if there are 16 weeks, there are 16 options, right? You either pick the first week or the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth or and so forth up to the 16th. And that's what the combinations would do too because the combination of 16 choose one, um, basically what that would give you is how many different ways could you pick one thing out of 16. And it's either pick the first or the second or the third or the fourth and so forth up to 16. So yeah, these actually both would end up being 16. So this is 16 times 16 or 16 squared, which is 256. All right, so basically what we've got going on here is like this first combination, I'm thinking of this as being for the fall, and then this one here is for the spring. Right, in each case you're picking one week out of 16. So it's the, the two combinations look exactly like each other because you're basically doing the same thing twice. You pick one out of 16 for the fall, you pick one out of 16 for the spring. So they look just like each other. Um, and I think that covers everything in 2G um, for the most part. And um, I, I squeezed in the thing that I thought was kind of a, a different look, which was number three. Um, that was the one that where I thought, oh, this is a little, a little more than, um, than some of the other ones where you have to kind of keep a lot of things straight. Um, but I think that should generally do it.